Hello, everybody. This is Mrs. Pound, and we're starting a new chapter, Chapter 12, on gases from BJU Chemistry's 5th edition. So we're going to start in the first section talking about some properties of gases. Our objectives will be to describe the behavior of gases, describe the properties of gases, and state the relationships between pressure, temperature, and volume. First, we're going to start with the kinetic molecular theory of gases. This theory explains the behavior and physical properties of gases, and there are many statements that go into this. So the first one is that gases consist of tiny particles with great distance between them. I have the pool table in the background because this can help you visualize these gas particles. Think of the billiard balls as the gas particles and However, it would be a little different as well. They're going to be a lot more spread out than on the pool table, okay? But the analogy works pretty well in other ways. The particles also move in random directions at high velocities and at many different speeds, often colliding and changing the particles' directions and speeds. So this is where the billiard balls do come in, that when you do hit um, or break the balls at the beginning. They go out in different directions. Some of them are going faster. Some of them are going slower. Uh, and they're going to collide with one another, change directions, collide with the side of the table. The particles and gases do not interact with each other or the walls of their container except during momentary collisions. And again, a lot like the billiard balls that they just hit each other and bounce off. The collisions are elastic and lead to an exchange of energy without losing any energy. We can also see that with billiard balls. The average kinetic energy of the particles is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas in kelvins. As the temperature of the gas rises, the particles move faster, resulting in more collisions. So we've talked about the definition of temperature before, and that fits. When we are working with our gases in this chapter, everything has to be in kelvins. We don't want to deal with any negative numbers that we would get in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Now, some other properties of gases are that gases undergo diffusion. When a gas, what it means for a gas is to, to diffuse is that it is the uniform mixing and spreading of gases over time. As we can see with this smoke, it is spreading out. And you have experienced that before. Maybe somebody has opened a bottle of strong smelling perfume, and after a while, you can smell it throughout the entire room. Now, something you may not be familiar with, which is very similar to diffusion, is effusion. This is when a gas moves through a tiny opening into an evacuated chamber. So here you can see I have two different chambers, two different openings. A smaller opening allows fewer particles to go through a larger opening, more particles, but that is effusion. Think of when you spring a leak in a tire. That would be effusion. Now, there is a gas law to go with this. This is Graham's law of effusion, and it states that the gas law that states that the rate of effusion is inversely related to the square root of its molar mass. So down here, I have the equation rate of effusion. This symbol here stands for proportional. Now, I said inversely proportional, so we have a one on top of the square root of the molar mass. And uh, just a limitation of computers here, this square root sign does cover that entire molar mass. So go ahead and draw your line all the way across there. But it is inversely proportional. So that means gases that are have more mass move slower. So this allows us to calculate the ratio between effusion rates of two different gases using this formula. Rate of effusion of gas one over the rate of effusion of gas two equals the square root of the molar mass of gas two over the square root of the molar mass of gas one. Now a key here, notice 
these two are flipped compared to over here, where we have one over two here, it's two over one here because of that inverse proportionality. It's opposite. So an example problem would be, calculate the ratio of effusion rates between nitrogen, N2, and argon. So the first thing we need are to know the molar masses. For nitrogen, because it's the molecule contains two atoms, don't forget to multiply your molar mass from your periodic table by two, and it comes out to 28.0152 grams. The molar mass of argon is 39.95 grams. When we, we write down our equation, and then we plug the numbers in. So, Square root of 39.95 grams, that is argon's molar mass, over the square root of 28.0152 grams, which is uh, a molecule of nitrogen's molar mass. When we do the math, we get 1.194. So what this means is that nitrogen gas, which is lighter and moves faster, will move 1.194 times faster than argon gas. So we state it as the gas that is on the top, okay, is the one that we base this number on. Now, some more properties. Gases are fluids, just like liquids. So what this means is they can be poured, and they have the ability to flow and take the shape of their container. Especially, you can pour very heavy gases that have a um, high molar mass. They also have compressibility. This means that high pressures can squeeze gases into smaller volumes. That's what we do. Maybe you have an air compressor at home. That's what an air compressor does. Uh, there is compressed helium in this canister here. They also have expansibility. This is the ability of a gas to quickly spread out to fill a low pressure region. So this canister is under very high pressure because it's been compressed, the helium in there. It will very quickly go into the balloon, which is under a much lower pressure. So it's demonstrating expansibility when it goes into the balloon. Pressure is a very important concept when we talk about gases as well. Pressure is the average force exerted per unit area when particles collide against a boundary. So how fast they're going and how many of them are pounding on the wall, that is what determines pressure. So for example, in tires, if you have low air pressure, it's probably because you've lost some particles or maybe the temperature outside is lower. So they're not moving as fast and they're not hitting the walls as hard. So let's talk about the relationships between temperature, pressure, and volume. The first relationship I want to talk about is the relationship between pressure and volume at constant temperature. Now, when we take a look at these three different properties of gases, we're going to look at two at a time and keep the other constant. So pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. What this means is that when one goes up, the other goes down and vice versa. So as volume decreases, pressure increases. We can see this with a syringe. If you were to hold your finger at one, one finger at the tip of one end of the syringe and you were to push on the plunger with the other end, you would see that as you decrease the volume, you can feel the pressure increase. You're having to push harder. And then if you decide to release the pressure, the volume will go up. The, the plunger will come back out of the other end of the syringe. So a good example of this is air in a syringe. The other, uh, another relationship is temperature and volume at constant pressure. Now these have a direct relationship. So as temperature decreases, volume decreases, and as temperature increases, volume increases. We tend to see this with helium balloons. Maybe you've experienced this. You bought a helium balloon in a nice warm store and you went outside on a cold winter day and the balloons shrank. 
and you thought you had maybe a defective balloon, but you didn't. It was just a temperature change because as soon as you take those balloons back into a warm room, the volume will increase again. Uh, what is happening is the temperature drop is just uh, causing the molecules to move slower, and so that will decrease the volume. Also related to this is temperature and pressure at constant volume. Again, they are a direct relationship as well. As pressure goes up, temperature goes down and vice versa. So as temperature decreases, pressure decreases. As temperature increases, pressure increases. And we see this with car tires. So in the winter, you may notice that your sensor on your car uh, on a cold day might tell you that you have low tire pressure. That's because the molecules are moving slower inside of the tire and not exerting as much pressure on the walls of the tire. And then uh, you may see on warm days that there is more tire pressure. And also, tire pressure increases as your as you drive your car due to friction with the road. So you have to be careful about inflating car tires. You don't want to inflate them too much. You don't want to inflate them too little, but inflating them too much or too much can um, cause damage because of these temperature changes. So our objectives were to describe the behavior of gases, describe the properties of gases, and state the relationships between pressure, temperature, and volume.